Hey, this is Caio from EssentialDeveloper.com. Today we are going to update our quiz project to Swift 4.1 and not just fixing syntax and warnings, but actually using the new features like conditional conformance. So let's go. Let's start with the engine because it doesn't have dependency on any other module. Okay, I can see a warning already. Let me run the tests. Okay, they are passing. Let's make sure the language setting is correct. There it is, Swift 4.1. Perfect, let's have a look at the warning. Okay, let's update the project settings. Succeeded, no more warnings. Well, that was easy. So let's commit. First, let's create a branch. Let's clear this. We have some new shared data, so let's add all of them. They're all related, so let's create a commit. Awesome. Now let's update our app. Well, let's try to build first. It's building fine. Build for the tests, also fine. Let's check for the language. Let's set it to Swift 4.1. Make sure the target also has Swift 4.1. Perfect. Let's run all the tests. And they pass. Great. Next, let's check the warnings. Well, first of all, we have an error here because I have the quiz engine project open. So let me close this. Okay, we have one warning. Instruct initializer must use self init because it's not in the module quiz engine. And that is true. I have a helper in my quiz app project, but the result is a type defined in the quiz engine project. So this is a cross module extension. And if you create your own initializers, you need to invoke an initializer that was defined in the main module. Okay, that makes sense. So a couple of things we can do here is to create a public initializer in the quiz engine module. And then we don't need this extension at all. But I don't want anyone to be able to create this struct outside the quiz engine module. Well, only tests. So let's not do this. Well, another thing we can do is to, instead of having this helper extension, we could import the quiz engine as testable in all of the test files that needs to create a result. But I prefer to minimize the places in my test that need to use internal resources or internal methods or internal properties. So we can limit the scope of testable by keeping this extension in here, but instead of having an initializer, we can have a static function to make results. So let's do this. So this function will return a result of type question, answer. And here I can use the default internal initializer from the quiz engine module. Because it's structs, they have a default initializer. The scope is internal, that's why we need the testable. Okay, let's try to build again. Right, so those are the places that we could just set as testable, and it would be fine. And that's an option, you can do it if you want. But I prefer to limit the places where I use testable. So, what we can do is to use the new make function that we just created. And to be fair, this test is not using any of those properties. For example, it just cares about the title that has nothing to do with answers or score. The title is pretty much always the same. So why don't we make this make function even nicer and give it some default values. So now we can say just make, or even better, we can just move this make here very short syntax, so we can get rid of this result. Okay, next error, just use make. It looks like this test cares about the questions, answers, and the score. So let's keep it. And again, look at this test. It just cares about questions, so it doesn't care about answers. So let's just use the empty make. Much nicer. <laughs> Now 
let's run and it passes so we are done with the warnings so let's commit all of those changes are related so let's add all of them let's commit okay what else can we do well we know that one of the new features is that the Swift compiler can now synthesize equatable implementations. So let's see if we have any equatable implementation that we can get rid of. Let me do a global search. Aha, uh -huh. here is one. I guess we have tests for that. And we do. Is equal is not equal. So let me remove the implementation and run the tests. Okay, so it looks like we don't need this implementation anymore. And since I don't have to write code for this, I don't need the tests anymore. So let's commit. Next. Okay, so this is our test helper. As you can see, the file name is result helper. So I still think we need this custom implementation, but we can do some refactoring here. Let's break this into different extensions. For example, I can have the make static function in a separate extension. And I also don't like that we are only using the score to determine the quality here. We should also use the answers because the result type has score and answers. But answers can only be equatable if answer is also equatable. The question is equatable because hashable is a protocol that also forces you to implement equatable, but there are no constraints to the answer, but we can use something else. What if we break down the hashable and the equatable implementations? And we add a constraint to only conform to equatable when the answer conforms to equatable. So now we can compare The answers as well. Let's try to build. Uh oh, as you can see, result needs to conform to equatable, and it conforms to equatable in this extension, but it has a constraint. So this extension needs to have the same constraint. And now it compiles. And just to show what happens if I remove the constraint, as you can see, answer needs to conform to equatable. Let's put this back, run the test again. Great, let's commit. Great, let's use a shortcut this time, dash am, since we have only one file. It also works in multiple files, but you need to be careful. You want to have meaningful commits, so we need to separate the changes in logical groups. And since this case you have only one file, it's okay to use dash am because it's gonna add everything to the stage and commit by using one command. Okay, so we refactor result test helpers. Great, let's clear this. Okay, what else can we do? Well, if you remember in episode 24, we had an issue where we were using arrays to define our options, but the problem was that we defined constraints in our generic types, forcing them to conform to equitable. And before Swift 4.1, arrays didn't conform to equitable because the language didn't have conditional conformance. For example, you couldn't create an extension array to make it conform to equitable, where the element type for that array was also equitable. But now we can. So let's find the commit we used to change all arrays to sets, and let's revert that. If we navigate to the second tab, select our branch, let's check the history with all commits. Right here, the commit that changed the answer type from array of string to set of strings. So let's try to revert that. Let's copy the identifier for this commit, which is the hash. Go back to the command line and let's type git revert 
and the identifier or the hash for that commit. Whoops, we have some conflicts. Let's have a look. Okay, right here we have a conflict. As you can see, we changed the array of strings to be a set of strings. So let's accept the right side. We could also open those files on Xcode and check for changes. And as you can see here, we have a set. Previously, it was an array. And at the same time, you also changed to use the new make function. So I can solve this manually. Thank you, compiler. Now we can run. And we have a failing test. Look at that. Test saving the day again. So a bad merge or a revert actually generated a failing test. What did we miss here? So the results view controller created by the factory should have a title. Interesting. So let's have a look at an iOS view controller factory. So here we create a results view controller and yeah, it doesn't look like we are setting the title. So another thing we can do is to use the version editor to check what changed in this file since the previous revision. And look at that, it looks like when I resolved the conflict in the file using the file merge tool, I didn't notice that I actually removed this line of code. Okay, so I can just copy this back. Let me run the test. And they pass. All right. So, okay, that was a bad merge, but things like that happen in the workplace. And I really trust those tests. I really trust that now that this is green, everything works. We again did a big change in the project and we found a failing test. We fixed it. It's green. So now if you run the app, all right, it still works. So even though this is a tiny, small project, we already can see the value of the tests helping us. Just like the value of having types and how the types and the compiler helped us get back into a stable version, even though we did a massive change in the project. And we can build and scale massive applications by using the same principles and get the same safeties by using the compiler along with tests we trust that run fast and are reliable. So that's it. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something today. Don't forget to check links in the description and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I see you next time.